Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we are working on a KitchenAid A9 coffee mill again. And uh, this one came in with a uh, KitchenAid 3B. I believe it was a 3B. Um, it'll be the next project that we're doing. Uh, mixer. It's a KitchenAid mixer. And they're both going to be done the same color. Um, but for now, I want to go ahead and I want to turn this on and see if this thing works. <laughs> Okay, it does work. I can hear the the burrs hitting, um, but that's you know we'll we'll go and uh, take care of that. That's um, probably just stuff underneath it here. Uh, this lid is awfully dented here, um, so I got to get this lid off because this lid has got to be done as well. There we go. The jar is in excellent shape. There's no chips or anything on there, so that looks good. Uh, I'm going to set this up on the shelf out of the way because we don't want anything happening to that. And then I'm going to go ahead and unplug this and we'll get started on taking this apart here. And to get down inside of this part here, there's a set screw on the back that's got to come out. And now this should unscrew, but oh, I see this one is really on there. Looks like it's been run all the way down to where you can't run it down anymore. Which that could also be why it sounded like the burrs were hitting. Oh. There's a burr on here that we'll have to take off and then this will end up getting powder coated. There are pins and springs. That's what gives you the tension and the, and the clicking sound when you when you turn that. Alright, we've got a burr on here that we're probably going to have to loosen up this jam nut here and run this screw down and uh, that'll jack that that burr right off the shaft on there. Right, let's get us some room on the jam nut here. Alright, should be just about there. There we go. You can see how that the end of that screw comes down here. And you're able to screw it against the shaft so you just basically lift this thing right up because these get you can see there's you know dust from coffee grinds and everything down in there and that gets in between that and the shaft and really makes it a bear to uh just pull off. Alright, so we've got this whole upper half here disassembled other than the, the pins that hold this door on. So now we can work on the bottom part of this here. And get our motor out of here. Seems like everything on this machine is super tight. All right, probably not easy for you guys to see. I'm sorry about that, but once you get this switch out of the way, I can take these four screws out of here. These are all really loose. 
So that's odd. Everything else was He-Man tight. And these four screws are practically falling out. Seems like with these, most of the work is um, is in getting getting your motor assembly back together. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna cut this cord here so I can get that out of the way. And now that we got those screws out, they hold this metal plate right to this base. But um, these tabs bent over right there. They hold the motor and everything to this, so we're going to try and take this out all in one shot now. Alright. There's the motor, and actually it looks pretty clean in here. Brushes are right in there. And it looks like a, maybe a little bit of wear on the armature. We're going to pull this all apart, we're going to check these brushes, polish up that armature and the uh, and little bushing and, and uh, wick that's in here. We'll get that lubed up good. Uh, seems to spin nice. The only thing that's left on here, inside there, is the two screws that hold that little plate on and, and that's what holds this bushing in, the upper bushing. There's the upper bushing with the wick on it. <coughs> we got our feet out of here too. These feet are just pressed in here. Or you know, they just push in to the hole here, but uh they do seem to stick well. We got brand new feet for this too. These are kind of they're soft, but they're hard on the very bottom. All right, now we got to just get our door off of here, and that's a lot of times easier said than done. A lot of times I end up having to drill these pins out just to, uh, you know, get new pins in there. I'm trying to get enough room to where I can just pop these ends off over the pins. Just about off. There we go. Alright, so the door's off. And these pins, if they won't come out, which they usually don't, they're going to have to be drilled out. So we're going to end up probably drilling those out and then uh, making new pins for that. Alright, so that's disassembly on this. Let's take a look at our motor here. Make sure you get 
that is, let's see. There's a uh, grommet here that we got to get out. It just slides in the groove, but it's a pretty, pretty good fit though. Alright, so that grommet's out of the way. see anyways there's the uh, there's a little cotter pin that goes back here to hold the brushes in There's the cotter pin that holds that side in, and the brush just popped out. There's the spring. Maybe the brush didn't pop out, just the spring. Alright, the brush is still in there. So once I get this apart, then I can get the brush out. Alright, so we just gotta basically do the same with this side here. Together though is a little, a little different because you got to have your brushes and, and these, these uh, cotter pins in there before you put this piece on, or you'll never get them in. brushes and they do look a little worn. The brushes that go in these aren't aren't that long to begin with because there's just not a lot of room for brush and spring but they are longer than that. Alright, there is a ball little ball bearing down in here that I'm trying to get out. There we go. And that's what the armature sets on. You definitely don't want to lose that. Alright. So to separate the rest of this, all you need to do is straighten out these tabs that we got bent here. probably won't show too much of the reassembly of this because, uh, you know, I, 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 there's these come off and there's a wick and a bush under there that we clean to. Um, because reassembling these is usually where, you know, if I was to, to show that with, with audio and everything, it, it probably wouldn't be a PG channel anymore, so um, it's pretty frustrating. But anyways, we've got all the parts here. These are getting done in black. Is this getting done in green and uh, 
Uh, I just got the door flap, but there it is. So we can set these aside and get these all cleaned up and uh, sandblasted and powder coated, and then we'll come back after we get everything put back together.
All right, so as you can see, we got this all wrapped up here. Um, the dents in the top, I got them out a little bit. Uh, I'm not, you know, good at tin knocking and all that, but um, the lid actually screws on. You can tighten it down and screw it off now without it hanging up on there. That that was dented and it was kind of crimping down on the glass, so that made it hard to get off. So I did get it flat. It's just a little wavy right there, but this is powder coated. This is done in black. Um, got the door done here. You know, where your stuff. I try to get some powder up in there, but it's hard with the Faraday effect. Because uh, I know a lot of people complain about it clogging up in the chute here and, and getting all clogged up in there. So uh, I did the best I could with that. Um, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Let's see, at this point, I wish I had some beans to put in there and grind to check the. You know the adjustment on here. Let me go ahead and take the jar off of here and be very careful with it. Um, this right now it's set all the way to fine, and that's all the way to coarse. And I'm not sure, you know, other than that, what other adjustments there may be. Um, other than you know maybe this, the screw in here may be a, an adjustment to jack it up. Uh, to bring it closer and fine. I'm not really sure. I know if I take this screw out and I turn this around back to to course so that it's on the next level of adjustment um, before I get the fine it's the teeth on the burrs start hitting so this has got to be where it's at right there and uh, on the bottom here I did something a little different too being at the cords on these if anything ever happens to these cords they're so so difficult you got to take everything apart to replace the cord. Um, I put a connection in the cord right here uh, you know, with some good crimp on connectors, so the cords and the connection is nice and solid. There, we got new rubber feet on it. Uh, this is the the old rubber feet. You can see how dirty these things are. And of course, you place the brushes on it too. Um, put in, you know, longer brushes. They they're not as long as like what you would put in a sunbeam because it just ain't the room in there for it. But they're significantly longer than what was in there. And uh, you know. Curious to find out when he gets this back how this thing grinds coffee. Um, you know, I've heard pros and cons about these. Some people love them. Some people say they, that they just, you know, they don't grind them. They they clog. So I, I'll be curious to find out how this one works here. Um, I try to polish up the burrs and, uh, like I said, get some powder up in the chute there. But um, that remains to be seen. You know how well that's going to work. So. What I'm going to do now is get this wiped down one more time, get this packed up and sent back with the uh, Kitchen 8K5 that we did in the same color. This is uh, also the um, Mint Pearl, I believe it is, or Pearl Mint. It's either Mint Pearl or Pearl Mint. I believe Pearl Mint is the color and it's got a bit of a, oops, it's got a bit of a, I don't know if you can see on there, pearlescent to it. Try and zoom in where the light's hitting at an angle. You might not be able to see. But anyways, that's a wrap on this one. If you guys have any other questions or comments, um, ask below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can. And um, as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.